What's up guys? This is Nene and welcome to the Nene Show. Hey! <laughs> Thank you guys again for listening right now. Um, I want to start off by saying a quote that I heard somewhere and it says, The truth shall set you free. It has never resonated with me until up in this point because we all have our truth and yet we are too afraid to speak our truth or even act our truth and what i mean by truth is more about what gift and what purpose you have in this world and so with me i've always let my fears get in the way of living my truth and that's because i have let all the outside factors dictate my decision making and i'm about to tell you why so i'm gonna t I'm, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about me and my story so i was born in mexico um 23 years ago and um up until i was eight years old i came to the states and i was raised over here um my parents separated when we were when i was young and um, after their separation i was raised by my single mother um, who also happened to be an immigrant mother the same as, as me of course um, and so I was raised by pretty much my three sisters and my mother by herself um, my mother used to work a lot she was a full-time employee sometimes she used to work seven days a week and I would only see her in the afternoons or even at nighttime or sometimes I don't even I wouldn't even see her at all and I spent most of my days either going to school or going out and about and just trying to live life without much guidance. Um, thankfully, I was the, I had my sisters with me and I was always I feel always blessed that they were in my life. But at the same time, they just like I did lacked our guidance. Um, that took a lot out of me and that stopped me from being me because i since i was born in another country i don't know if for any of you that are not born in the states or are in another country besides your own home country you'll know that it's very tough to fit in it's hard to even feel like you belong and that's because obviously the change in environment, um, the change in language, um, the change in culture has a lot to deal with you. And coming to the States and being surrounded by American, um, Caucasian people, it was very tough in the beginning. Um, my mother used to work for a mostly Caucasian family. Um, she was a nanny at the time and so I was taking to to their home so that I can you know just open up and learn the language and and um, just live a, a different lifestyle um, for the time being and so it was it was always very it was very tough because I never really felt like I belonged and it was always that that um insecurity of mine that i never really was able to express myself fully i started to learn the language but i always had an accent and that accent was made fun of you know growing up when i was in high school and elementary school and so it really affected me throughout the years um unfortunately i stopped or i didn't really talk to a lot of people or I didn't really have a lot of close friends and it was because of that reason I was very insecure physically and mentally um, growing up also brown hair brown haired um, short chubby girl I always looked at the girls that I was surrounded with you know with the Caucasian families and stuff and I saw how many of them were very thin and they were very beautiful and according to society and stuff even though you know I, I even though I know that I am beautiful but then I didn't feel that at the time so 
it was always that burden of mine to never feel like I was beautiful enough or maybe skinny enough or or even confident enough to love myself so that was just me growing up um, I still did a lot of great things I was part of a, um, a JROTC that explains why I wear military hats <laughs> for those that don't um, know I used to um, be in the JROTC for Marine Corps and ever since I joined that team specifically it just completely changed my perspective and I and when I was in high school I wanted to join the Marine Corps because I felt so proud to be part of something and that was always that has always been my thing and my um, technically my journey towards something like that was my goal I always wanted to be part of something because I never felt like I belonged anywhere so when I um, I was in high school and I did um, Gerald to see um, as you may know that when you're in the military you have the bond you have the brotherhood and I always I always was looking forward to that um, unfortunately at the time you know I, I was illegal I couldn't I knew that I couldn't join the Marine Corps but my dream was was still there and so thanks um, thanks to their values thanks to the leadership traits that they teach us in school and that even the master surgeons the first sergeants teach students um, is what has allowed me to be a more more consistent towards um, towards working on my physical being and my well-being um, but even then you know it was never that okay I found something that I can finally say you know what this is me this I can just go all in and just be happy no like at, at the same time I, I always went through through troubles and tribulations with um, with my surroundings my environment I was um, raised in the south technically like the south side of Chicago where um, at the time there was there was not like a yeah I mean I was not surrounded by like the gang related um, people but at the same time my my crowd wasn't really um, healthy um, when I mean healthy it was not really a, a crowd that you you want to be surrounded with all the time or you want to be seen or you're proud to see because they're not really doing things for the community or for themselves so I went through through you know a lot of friends who I thought they were friends but not really um, I went through I went through a lot of people that I considered family but they were not really family because at the end of the day they were either looking for something in return and so I went through through times where I didn't really um never really felt fulfilled like i never felt happy and as weird as the sound is this it's like i had my family and my sisters and all and they're such great girls and they always they were always there and they always offered help and and just someone to talk to but them themselves didn't really receive that so they didn't know how to be or how to guide you know and and so I always seek that um, moving forward after I finished high school that's where I feel like my life changed um, it was after I graduated high school that I started MMA um, of starting college as well and at the time I was I was not disciplined I was not I was not mentally there <laughs> So one thing that you guys need to know about MMA is that you learn how to be more self-aware, if that makes any sense to you guys. And when I mean self-aware is where your mind is at and where your mind your body is going. So a big part of mixed martial arts is knowing when or knowing where your mind is at the moment of right and controlling your emotions and so I was already feeling like 
I never belonged and at the same time I was always angry for whatever reason it could be because of the trauma that I had when I was growing up um, which makes a lot of sense and with that I also um, didn't take relationships um, could be like personal relationships or friendships serious so I had a lot of trust issues and when I started MMA it showed <laughs> and it was all when it came down to training it was when we did sparring sessions and I used to take things so personal and I used to flip out and cry because I was angry at the person that was hitting me even though it's a sport um, I was not used to getting hit in the face I mean who likes to get hit in the face I mean hit in the face right of course not but at the same time it was it's part of a sport and I never understood that I always took things personal and that's how it messed me up in the beginning um i started sparring like f like five i believe like three to five months after and that was because i asked my coach if i can start sparring because i eventually i felt like i wanted to fight but i never really admitted it and when i started um mma i was not consistent like i said i used to go like twice a week if any and that was because I, I mean, I, I, I like the sport, but I mean, the consistency wasn't there. And I always thought to myself, it's like, okay, I want to do this. But at the same time, I was not taking the right actions to it. I was putting other people, my inner circle, um, above, above that, above working in me. So... I see mixed martial arts as a as a way to work on yourself and that's because you learn the skill sets yes to fight yes and maybe to defend yourself well actually you can always defend yourself using mixed martial arts so that's a big part of it and then so you work on the you can work on the skill set the physical aspect but at the same time the big the biggest Thing in mixed martial arts working in your mindset and like I said my mindset was never really there I was always thinking about something else or thinking about the homework that I needed to do the next day or maybe thinking about the boyfriend at the time or I was thinking about stresses or just nonsense and my mind was never really fully present in the sport which also prevented me from learning a lot of um, techniques and a lot of things about me that I you know could have learned if I really paid more attention but my attention span and my focus was never there and so my coach oh he asked he would ask me like what do you want to do like what do you want to do with this right and so when I first opened up to him and I told him that I wanted to fight he's like okay let's get it right let's um let's work on it <laughs> but even then I was in I I wasn't taking myself serious either i said that i wanted to fight but yet i was choosing other other things to do on the days of training as opposed to me going to to train and so i i went through through a stage of my life where i thought that i was doing it all right like i was going to school because my mother told me to um i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i enjoy learning but I just, I, the, the field that I was going at the time, I was not going for myself. I was going for my mom's. She wanted me to, well, she, subconsciously, she did. She wanted me to do something that I enjoyed. But what she thought that I enjoyed wasn't really it. And that was because I always wanted to please my mother. I always wanted to feel, fulfill her expectations. Because she worked so hard throughout her life. And... Like I said, she used to work almost every day sometimes and she used to come home and cook for us and she's the sweetest woman and she would always be so giving to everybody. But at the same time, she had put a lot of pressure on me. Like I needed to do something big with my life because I was not born over here. So therefore I had to live the American dream. 
I don't know what that means, <laughs> but for those that are immigrants or anybody that is not from the country, you guys know that you, in order for you to, to survive in this country, you kind of have to adapt, right? And that's just in any country. So if you want to go into another country, then yeah, you need to learn the customs, the culture, you need to adapt. And so with my mother, her, her thing was that, okay, you go to school. Um, you get a good job, you get a really good career, and you're good to go, right? But at the moment, I was I used to agree on a lot of things because I wanted to make her happy, but it was never really making me happy until I started mixed martial arts. And when I started MMA, um, it wasn't really socially acceptable in my part of the family. And that was because it is a rough sport, I understand. And it is... A, it's a rough, it's a tough, and it's not something that you can just, you know, talk to a random girl and say, hey, what do you do for fun, or what do you do as a sport, and then she says mixed martial arts. That's not something you hear on a regular basis, right? You don't see a lot of women doing MMA. You may hear some judo or taekwondo or karate, but... MMA and then on top of that with small gloves and actually fight you don't you don't see a lot of that so At the time it, I was never really taken serious and it, it took a lot out of me I always I never really felt the support system. Unfortunately, my family is amazing at praising others but sometimes praising praising each other's is as family. It's it's been a really big um burden like it, we never really took each other into consideration like we always thought that we knew everything but at the same time we just didn't we lacked that that consideration you know like paying attention to people like to each other's is interest and each other's is um yeah hobbies or whatever makes the spark in us and a big part of it is because, like I said, the lack of guidance. My mom used to work so much, and then so it was just my sisters and I. And yeah, I mean, it, you know, life happens. Um, but going back to the mixed martial arts, I, I learned that not like nobody was gonna push me to do it but myself, right? I, I started the journey without even thinking of what was gonna happen. I thought I was just gonna do it for maybe like a few months. I didn't even think I was gonna last. To be honest with you, I I liked it, but it was, it was not my passion, you know, at the beginning. And it was because I, I, I chose, um, at the time I chose my studies, I chose uh, my boyfriend, I chose friends and going out as opposed to really look at the impact and really you know value the sport for what it is um thankfully i actually stood and i got my first fight after two years of training it was the scariest shit i've ever done <laughs> besides this <laughs> it, and that's because you know it brings that um like how do i say it it brings that fire in you for those that have had any maybe street fights, you know that gut feeling that you have. It's like, you feel it. You know some, some shit's about to happen, but at the same time, it's like, okay. I mean, you you know what you're getting yourself into. And so, with like when it comes to a fight, you're fighting in front of other people on top of you fighting that one person. Like, you know that one person is, gonna, is there to hurt you. And on top of that, now you're being watched by all these people. And so, oh, it was one of the scariest things. And I enjoyed it so much. And ever since, it's like, it just brought that back in me. Like, oh my God, like I never really stopped. And I use this, this sport as an outlet. It has allowed me to grow so much. I was not this person that you hear right now. I was a completely different person. And... Thank, thanks to, the, I will say thanks to the people in my gym and thanks to, to me accepting and inviting 
that support and that um, change in my life is that it has allowed me to become the person that I am today. I firmly believe that I know that life is not, it's not easy. And I know that life is supposed to be hard. And yes, you know, we all go through shit. But at the same time, it is all about perspective and what you do from that. Not everyone's going to see the positivity in everybody, you know? Not everyone's going to see positivity in life. And I, that's a given. People will see the negative and everything. And sometimes it's okay to just look at the other side of the spectrum as opposed to just, just positivity. Because you want to be mindful of everything, right? But at the same time, it, it's very critical for us to find the good in everything. And for me, I could have, you know, followed the steps of my, uh, my surroundings at the time when I first started MMA. I could have stopped this sport because, I mean, my, I mean, at the time my friends were, you know, they were super awesome and they, they were like my best friends. And I mean, it, I was so easily influenced. I would just go out with them and just spend more time with them as opposed to me you know focusing on myself but I didn't do it because I know that this sport was bringing that that mental peace and that's what I always needed I always felt like I needed to belong somewhere and then I finally got it I finally found somewhere that I can genuinely be myself without any judgment without anybody telling me what I can and cannot do and without anybody stopping me from doing anything that I want to do. Obviously within the the, <laughs> the bounds of nature, I'm not going to be doing something stupid. But at the same time, it's like I finally found something, you know, the, something that fulfills me from the heart. And that's, that's really crazy. Not all of us can say that. And I really wanted to share that with you. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this. Oh. I just want to leave off with, you know, a little note by saying that, yes, life is hard, but you can get through it. You will have dealt with a lot of shit already. And you are standing here. You're watching me. You're listening right now. And you've made it this far. So you can't give up. Just like I didn't give up. I could have given up my life because, like I said, I didn't... I was so close to just letting my life go because I didn't know where I was going. And I never felt like I deserved it. But we all deserve to be happy. So, you take care now. Oh, and one last thing. Those that love you will always want to see you happy with them or without them and if those that want you to be around them even though you're not happy thank you <laughs>